Hey designers, it's me Jan and today we are diving into a super important topic for web and UI design, annotating spacing in Figma. Whether you are collaborating with developers, working on a handoff or just keeping your designs clean and organized, understanding spacing annotations can make a world of difference. Spacing is the foundation of design structure and readability, creating a sense of balance and harmony within your layouts. Proper annotations play a crucial role in bridging the gap between designers and developers, ensuring clear communication and reducing misunderstandings during the design to code process. By annotating spacing, effectively you establish consistency in paddings, margins and overall layouts which becomes especially critical when scaling designs for various devices and screen sizes. It's important to note that you don't need to annotate every single screen. Doing so would be a waste of time and effort. Instead, focus on providing clear annotations for the most critical screens or simply presenting your spacing approach to the team. This strategic approach can be a game changer, ensuring alignment between your design vision and the implemented solution. But it's not only about design handoff process. These annotations can be great also for your portfolio and presentation of your UI design expertise and demonstrating sense for details. The second necessary point is also to educate developers how to read these measures even without graphic annotations, because it's of course possible all of these read in dev mode directly in Figma. Before we jump into Figma, I would like to quickly define general spacing approach I follow. The 8 point or 4 point spacing system is a design methodology that ensures consistency and harmony across your layouts by using increments of 8 or 4 pixels pixels for spacing and sizing elements. In the 8-point green system, all margins, paddings and dimensions are multiplies of 8, for example 8 pixels, 16 pixels, 24 pixels, while the 4-point system operates similarly but in smaller steps using increment of 4. This approach simplifies alignment, makes designs more predictable and translates uh, seamlessly into code. As most of UI frameworks and grid systems can easily adapt to these values. Whenever you are designing buttons, cards or complex layouts, the 8-point or 4-point system helps create a cohesive and scalable design framework. Ok, so here we are in Figma and in the practical part of this video we will uh, annotate spacing for this particular web card. As you can see for this web card I'm using auto layout features with the wrap option here, so it's 100% responsive as you can see right now. So for annotating the spacing, we will focus on the vertical form of the web card like this. For annotating spacing, you have multiple options in Figma. There is an option of dev mode, which is built directly in Figma, but for our case, we will use the plugins. As you can see, if you switch here to the dev mode in Figma, you can see already the spacing values here. It's a really useful tool for the handoff of the design components. So you can see here that we have the border, which is one pixel, then the padding, 24, and all of these measures that are useful, especially for the developers. But as mentioned, for our case to show the spacing values visually, we will use the Figma plugins. And here you have again multiple options. So the first option is this plugin called Red Lines and Annotations. As you can see from the preview, you can again uh, place the visual values of the spacing directly within the plugin. And it's 100% free, so you can definitely check out this plugin. Then there is plugin called Annotation. The Annotation plugin has the same role like the previous one, so you can see that you simply select uh, on any text or group elements to create annotations. So these annotations include again the spacing values and you can see here that you have multiple options for choosing units or font size and so on. Another option is this plugin called Design Doc Spectral Measures, Annotations and Handoff. As you can see from the preview video here you can again place directly the visual measures of uh, the components and also for the elements like text layers and so on. And again, the process is really straightforward. So you just run the plugin, select the frame and add the measure. 
But my favorite one is this one called Red Lines by Danny Keen. So this one is from my point of view the most straightforward and my workflow is based on this. So I definitely recommend uh, the plugin called Red Lines. And we will use this one for annotating our web-based card. So let's open the Red Lines plugin for our annotation project. So after running the plugin, you can see this kind of UI. So here we have the first step, which includes the measuring lines. As you can see, with one click, you can here place the vertical lines, the horizontal lines, no matter the border you select. Really useful here is also that you can select the colors of the measuring lines, so you can defer then uh, particle measures like uh, padding, margins and so on. Also you can select here other elements like space between items, dimensions, font size of the measures that are then automatically placed within the canvas or showing the measure units. For now we will keep this as it is right now. What I want to show you now is that it's not only about measuring lines but if you switch to the second step here you can see the outlines so you can again switch uh, between multiple options here and select the color and the opacity or you can choose uh, parallel lines like this or the single lines which might be useful sometimes too especially if you want to communicate kind of alignment of particle design elements. So let's start with annotating our web card. The first thing I would like to annotate is this particle image. So the first step is that we will highlight this image by choosing these outlines. For this one, I think that we can just highlight it with this second option like this. And you can see that the layer with this particle highlight is automatically placed within the canvas. As we have it now highlighted, we just switch to the first tab and we can select here the measuring lines. So let's choose first the top and then the left. So here you can see that we have a great measuring lines showing the values of the pixels that we are using for this particle image. Of course, there might be some uh, manual adjustment needed to have the component really well uh, annotate. So here we can move the line like this and also the top one, I think that we can move it to the top like this. And now we can continue with the other elements. So the second element is this kind of text layer. So again, we choose the outlines like this and again set the measuring lines on the left side. And since we have this particle top uh, measuring line, we don't have to add another one here. And again, let's align these two measuring lines like this. And what we can do here is also to add these parallel lines like this and resize it to make it crystal clear that these values are set for this particle text layer. So for this one, let's choose uh, the particle layer which contains these parallel lines. And, and resize to overlap the card directly to the measuring lines here. So it's crystal clear that these measures uh, are set for this particle text layer. And like this, you can continue with the others. So now we annotated all of the elements inside the card. So the process is the same like I showed you previously. But what is really important is also the spacing between the elements. And for this, I would definitely like to change the color of the spacing measures. So the proportions of the elements are clear and they are different in comparison to the spacing values. So to make this process easier, what I will do right now is that I will copy this particular layer showing these uh, measures and copy it right here uh, next to the component. And then I will manually adjust the color here to the green one. Let's choose something like this and also for the fill. And now we have prepared the component for showing the spacing between. And then we will just move the layer on top of the component and we are holding the space so it's not directly placed to the component inside like this. And again, we will resize to fit the component size like this. And then you can again use the measuring values here to show the spacing. So let's copy and paste this HEX code here and let's add measure to the right side. So it's on the opposite side than the measures of the elements inside. So let's click here and you can see that we have 24 pixels for this particle padding inside. And again, let's copy this process for all of the other spacing. So here, let's choose this layer and also the 24, copy and paste and move it directly below. So we are now showing also this 24 pixels and also in the bottom like this. 
and do it for all of the others. So here it's a little bit less. So let's resize to 16 like this. So here is 16. So we have also uh, manually adjust this 16 pixels. And again, let's do it for all of the other spacing between the elements. Okay, so after several clicks, the annotations might look like this. So we have all of the spacing measures annotated and we are communicating clearly that we are using the four point spacing system grid. So you can ensure that the developers are on the same way with your spacing system or you can present your designs effectively in your portfolio. Of course, you can use other plugins that I show you, but this one is my choice. As a last tip for this video, I would like to show you a little bit different plugin, which is completely automated. So if you go to the Figma community files here and search here for the specs, you can find here this plugin called Specs, formerly 8 Shapes Specs. And this plugin allows you to completely automate this process of annotating the component. So if we switch back to our component of the web-based card and then search here for the Specs plugin and run it, you can see this particular UI where you just select the anatomy, the properties and the layout you want to show with the, within the component documentation and then just choose the component and click here on run. And after a few seconds, you have this annotation ready for you with the name of the component. So here it would be more like a lector card or something like this. So you can see here the annotations of the particle elements inside the card. So for example, the two. So here we have the image, the hive, the min width and the border radius. And also there are the values for the spacing we did right now. So it's not that pretty like the manual adjustment we did for uh, our card here with the red lines plugin but this one is completely automated so it's much faster and it's a little bit more complex because here we have all of the paddings item spacing and all of these documented in this simple form so here we have also the content inside so here you have also the behavior of the responsive components and you can see that it is really complex documentation which is done with a single click so it's really awesome tool for the design handoff if you are working with the variables within uh, your design system this plugin uh, can do also variables so as said it's a really complex one okay so that's all for this video don't forget to subscribe for more ux ui design content and see you soon in the next video